This time we're going to look at testing extension leads. To test an extension lead, you need to do four things. Firstly, you do a thorough physical check of the lead. 80 to 90% of your faults will be physical damage to the lead. If there's no physical damage to the lead, the next test you do is to check its electrical integrity. There are three tests you have to do for that. The first test is to test the resistance between the earth pin going in and the earth pin coming out. Then you have to check the polarity. Now the polarity simply means that it's polarised. The active there is the same as the active coming out there. The wires haven't been changed over in the process. And you have to check either the insulation resistance, the strength of the insulation between that point and active and neutral, between active and neutral and earth, or you can check the amount of earth leakage between the active, neutral and earth. The problem is to do either of those tests you need specialised equipment. But we'll disregard that for a moment and we'll go on and I'll just show you how to test a lead using a simple multimeter. You can't do the complete test but you can do most of it. The first thing you do when you use a multimeter is put it on the lowest ohm scale. The maximum earth resistance you're allowed is 1 ohm. The lowest resistance scale we've got here is 200 ohms. So, as you can see, there is a fair margin for error and any reading that you get will only be a guesstimation. The first thing you do when you're using any multimeter on the ohm scale is make sure it is zeroed. To do that, you join your two leads together and you read the dial. It's reading about 0.6. As I said, 200 ohms, 0.6 or 0.5 in 200 ohms isn't bad, which is within the limitations of the meter. And it could also be the resistance of the lead. So when you're taking your readings, you take that into account. All right, the next thing, and I have a bit of an issue with this, to test the earth resistance of the lead, you have to stick a probe into the end of it. The danger there is I don't like anybody sticking probes into anything. It's like going to a PowerPoint and sticking your probe in. Because there is always a possibility that you've got the wrong end of the lead. And the only way to be absolutely certain of that is to run your hand down the lead and have the whole lead in your hand at the same time. The only way to be absolutely certain of that is to run your hand over the whole lead. When you do your physical check, you'll be doing that anyway. Make sure that the plug that you've got is connected to the other end of the socket that you've got. Because if it isn't, there's a possibility that the other end could be plugged into 240. And I've seen it done, I've done it myself. I must admit, I've done it myself. I've tested the wrong end of a lead. And anybody who's done the um, test and tag course will see that in one of, my, one of the lessons. Okay, the, so assuming you have the right end of the lead, so the next thing you do to test the earth resistance, you clamp the earth onto the earth pin, you clamp the probe onto the earth pin, and you get your probe and you stick it in there after you've been absolute certain ah oh, I've got infinity there must be something wrong let's see I've got two leads here on my bench I've got the wrong end 
And it is that easy. I've seen it done so many times where people have two or three things on their bench and they test the wrong the plug on one to the base on the other or the wrong appliance. They, they test the plug for one appliance and try and get an earth on the other appliance. Never ever, under any circumstances, at any time, have two things on your bench when you're doing your testing. Only ever have one. So, okay, let's go back and do it again. Connect your probe to the earth wire. Take your probe and connect it to the earth. And there I'm reading 1.1 ohm. The maximum I can have is 1 ohm. But remember there's a 0.6 error. So I'm getting about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of an ohm, which is fine. The other test you have to do is to test the polarity of the plug. The polarity simply means the active going in there is the same as the active coming out there. And an easy way to remember it, put the plug in your right hand with the earth pointing to the ground and you're looking at the active. Put the socket in your left hand with your earth pointing to the ground and you're looking at the active. So now what you have to do is connect your probe to the active and then put your other probe into the active on the other end. And there it is. So the polarity is correct. The other test that you have to do is the earth leakage or insulation resistance test. Now you can't do that with a simple multimeter. You need specialised equipment. It can either be a megameter like this, and I'll demonstrate how to do that in a moment, or my absolute number one preference, and I believe this should be really the only way of testing a lead, is a portable appliance tester, commonly known as a PAT. This is one of ours. I just happen to have it on hand. And to test the lead, you simply plug it in that end, plug it in that end, turn it to the test, and you will see it checks, immediately checks the polarity, it checks the earth leakage on the bottom line and the earth resistance on the top line, and that's the test done. By far the simplest and safest way of doing it. But there's a bit of a problem here. Not all probes will fit into a plug socket. Some of the better probes are organised so that you can fit a clamp onto them, which makes them too big to fit into the probe, into the socket. There's a couple of ways out of that. There is a book out, been out for a few years now, that recommends plugging a plug into the back so that you can access the terminals. Great idea. And I've seen a guy on the job had made up a lead like this so that he could plug that into his plug and get access to the terminals that way. Both good ideas, both work. The problem is, if you plug it in to the lead that you're testing, and then forget to take it out, these are live, and they would be pretty much deadly. Now, Years ago, when I first started doing this, probably 15, 16 something years ago, I actually did that. I left one in a plug and walked away, and I went into a cold sweat as soon as I realised what I'd done. Don't do it. 
if if you must you may get a plug like this drill three small holes in the back just big enough for your probe to go in and use it for that purpose only drill the holes just big enough for the probes to go in and don't use it for anything else that way if you forget it it's more or less safe but I cannot stress enough the danger of sticking your probe into something that could potentially be live there is only one way to ensure that doesn't happen and that is to have the whole lead in your hand at the same time or if you're working on an appliance have the plug of the appliance either in your hand or on the desk in front of you because it is potentially very dangerous and if it was up to me I would not allow this at all I would say that anybody who is a competent person should use one of these.